And, and so the twist there is China is there on the moon, on the far side of the moon. We don't know what they're doing because we don't have infrastructure up there to even see what's going on. But we do know they're mining helium-3. But on the moon or on the asteroids, there's a ton of helium-3. And so to give you an example of what it means, if we were to mine the moon for helium-3, we could, uh, at the current level of electricity use in America, or not in America, on, in the globe, we could, we could power the energy needs of the human race for thousands of years based on the helium-3 that's on the moon right now. While NASA struggled with yet another Artemis setback, China quietly achieved something that should terrify every American. They didn't just land on the far side of the moon, they discovered materials that could revolutionize energy production for the next thousand years. But here's what's really unsettling. Their latest samples from Chang'e 6 represent the first materials ever returned from the moon's hidden hemisphere. Chinese scientists have discovered a new mineral called Changes Site Y that contains traces of helium-3, the holy grail of fusion energy. And while our space agency struggles with budget cuts, China is systematically mapping every helium-3 deposit that could power fusion reactors and make whoever controls it the dominant superpower of the 21st century. These revelations might sound like science fiction, but they're backed by documented evidence from Chinese scientific publications and official mission data. Here's what's actually unfolding on the lunar surface. In 2019, China became the first nation to successfully land on the moon's far side, a feat that even NASA had never attempted. But this wasn't just about planting a flag and taking selfies. This was the opening move in what intelligence analysts are calling the most important resource grab in human history. The landing site wasn't chosen randomly. Chang'e 4 touched down in the Fon Karman crater, sitting inside the massive South Pole Aitken Basin, one of the largest impact structures in our solar system. Think of it as a colossal impact scar that punched through the moon's crust billions of years ago exposing materials from deep inside our satellite that had never seen sunlight. But here's where it gets interesting. The far side of the moon is fundamentally different from what we see every night. While our side is covered with dark volcanic plains, the far side has a thicker crust, riddled with ancient craters. It's like comparing a renovated house to an archaeological dig site. One tells you about recent history, the other reveals secrets from the very beginning. And China knew exactly what they were looking for. The first major discovery came in the form of a mysterious gel-like substance that their U-22 rover spotted in a small crater in mid-2019. For months, Chinese officials kept the images classified, fueling wild speculation across the internet. When they finally released the photos, it showed a dark, glistening material unlike anything in the surrounding lunar dust. Turns out it was Breca, rock and soil fused together by the incredible heat of a meteorite impact. But this wasn't just any impact debris. The spectral analysis revealed it was rich in olivine and pyroxene, minerals that told the story of high-energy collisions that shaped the moon's hidden face over billions of years. It resembled melted regolith samples from Apollo missions, but this was discovered in a completely new location on the far side. However, this finding paled in comparison to what came next. In 2020, Chang'e 5 returned with samples that led to a groundbreaking discovery. Chinese scientists found a brand new mineral called Changesite Y, the sixth new lunar mineral ever discovered, and the first found by China. But here's the kicker, this mineral contains traces of helium-3, the isotope that could revolutionize energy production on Earth. Helium-3 remains largely unknown to the American public, yet it represents the ultimate breakthrough in clean energy technology. This isotope is incredibly rare on Earth, but exists in abundance in lunar soil deposited over billions of years by solar wind. Chinese scientists estimate that 1.4 ounces of helium-3 could produce as much energy as 5,000 tons of coal. We're talking about a resource that could make oil obsolete overnight. Estimates suggest that more than a million tons of helium-3 are present in the lunar regolith, enough to power Earth for thousands of years. And while American energy companies are still arguing about fracking permits, 
China is systematically mapping every helium-3 deposit on the lunar surface. Their orbiters and rovers have been conducting what amounts to the most comprehensive geological survey in history, identifying the richest mining sites for future extraction. But it gets even more strategic than that. The far side of the moon offers something that no location on Earth can provide, complete radio silence. Shielded from Earth's electromagnetic interference, it's the perfect location for deep space telescopes that could detect signals from across the galaxy. Chang'e 4 deployed an ultraviolet telescope, the first lunar observatory of its kind, that's already monitoring space in ways impossible from Earth. Some intelligence analysts believe this isn't just about science. A base on the far side could serve as an early warning system for incoming asteroids or space debris, or potentially as a surveillance platform that's completely hidden from Earth-based detection. And here's what should really concern every American. China isn't just exploring the moon, they're preparing to colonize it. Their Chang'e 4 mission carried a biosphere experiment, a sealed container with cotton seeds, potato seeds, and even fruit fly eggs. In January 2019, they achieved something that NASA has never done. They successfully grew the first plant on another planetary body. That cotton sprout only survived for two weeks before the lunar night killed it, but it proved that Earth life can begin to grow in alien conditions. This wasn't just a publicity stunt, it was a proof of concept for lunar agriculture. Future Chinese astronauts could potentially grow their own food on the moon, making long-term habitation not just possible but practical. Meanwhile, China solved the biggest technical challenge of far-side exploration. Because the bulk of the moon blocks direct communication, they launched the Kuekiao Relay Satellite in May 2018, positioning it at the Earth-Moon L2 point. It's like they've built the first lunar internet, enabling real-time control of rovers and future bases from Earth. By 2030, China plans to land their first Taikonauts on the lunar surface using their new Long March 10 heavy lift rocket. But this isn't a flags and footprints mission like Apollo. They're planning to establish the International Lunar Research Station, a permanent base that could house dozens of researchers and miners. And here's the part that should keep American strategists awake at night. China is offering partnership in this lunar base to any country willing to operate outside the US-led Artemis framework. They're essentially creating an alternative to American space leadership, with the moon as their headquarters. The geopolitical implications are staggering. The nation that controls lunar helium-3 extraction could dominate global energy markets for centuries. The country that establishes the first permanent lunar base gets to write the rules for space resource utilization. And right now, China is winning this race by a significant margin. NASA's Artemis program, originally scheduled to return Americans to the moon by 2024, has been delayed to 2026 and beyond. Meanwhile, Chinese missions are launching like clockwork, each one building on the discoveries of the last. In 2024, Chang'e 6 made history again by returning the first samples from the moon's far side. A total of 1.935 kilograms of moon samples were brought back from the South Pole Aitken Basin, specimens that had remained completely unstudied until now. These rocks and soil are now being analyzed in Chinese laboratories, and whatever they're discovering, they're keeping it to themselves. Chang'e 7 is scheduled to launch in the late 2020s, targeting the moon's South Pole to search for water ice deposits. Chang'e 8 will test in-situ resource utilization, essentially learning how to live off the land on the moon. By the time American astronauts finally return to the lunar surface, they may find Chinese flags already planted at the best mining sites. But perhaps the most concerning aspect of China's lunar missions isn't what they found, it's what they're not telling us. Chinese scientific papers are increasingly classified, and mission data that was once shared openly is now restricted to domestic researchers. The samples returned by Chang'e 6 are being analyzed in laboratories that foreign scientists can't access. Whatever they're discovering in those precious far-side materials, they're keeping it to themselves. And that brings us to the ultimate question. What else is China finding up there that they don't want the world to know? The moon has become the proving ground for 21st century superpower competition. While Americans debate terrestrial politics, China is quietly securing the high ground, literally. They're not just exploring space, they're claiming it. Chinese officials have outlined a roadmap where the Chang'e missions paved the way for a crude lunar base in the 2030s. 
They're planning to build this base likely near the moon's south pole in partnership with other countries, but notably excluding the United States. The next decade will determine whether America remains the dominant space power or becomes a spectator to China's lunar empire. The discoveries they've already made, from new minerals containing fusion fuel to proof that life can grow on other worlds, represent the foundation of humanity's multi-planetary future. The question isn't whether we're in a new space race. We are. The question is whether America will wake up in time to compete, or whether we'll spend the next century buying helium-3 from Chinese lunar mines. The far side of the moon is no longer dark and mysterious. It's become the most important real estate in the solar system. And right now, China holds the deed. What do you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to Space Aquarius because this is your space.